So, welcome again to the new lecture of this course solar photovoltaics principles, technologies and materials. So, we have been talking about thin film solar cells for past couple of lectures. So, let me just brief the recap of previous lecture. In the last lecture, we started our discussion with cadmium telluride solar cells. So, cadmium telluride solar cells are basically thin film solar cells where we use P type CDTE as absorber and uh, so it, this is about 2 micron thick layer and then N type CDS is used as uh, window layer and to make a junction. Okay. And then appropriately you choose the contacts and uh, this is basically a device which is on glass substrate. and the light typically comes from uh, in class side. And we also looked at a few processing issues of this processing uh, methods. So, we looked at uh, evaporation, sputtering and galvanic reaction. So, it is a very good material from the perspective of properties, it has a almost ideal band gap, the efficiency of the devices are very good, they are about uh, 21 percent or so in the, in the laboratory scale and a very promising technology for the, uh, for the future and potentially the one to replace silicon eventually. So, let me now move on with the some more things about uh, processing. So, as we said about processing, so uh, not only you can process CDTE by sputtering, evaporation and galvanic reaction, you can also process this by MOCVD kind of process, wherein you know the, the precursors of CD and TE uh, react over a heated substrate and lead to formation of cadmium telluride film and these precursors are basically metallo organic precursors. So, basically we are looking at uh, for example, for cadmium, we are using uh, cadmium dimethyl, cadmium dimethyl, uh, for cadmium we are dimethyl cadmium and for tellurium we use uh, diisopropyl tellurium. Okay. And these are put into a carrier gas hydrogen, which is so essentially you have a uh, you have a substrate here. So this is substrate, which is kept inside a chamber at a temperature of 200 to 400 degrees centigrade, and then precursors arrive. So this is precursors and uh, then they react to give rise to CDTE film and the byproducts go out of the system. So, this is a very useful process and uh, uh, it gives you uh, columnar grains with a grain diameter of about 1 micron or so. Okay. Columnar grains are uh, good because uh, see you can have a in a device you can have a grain structure like this, like this or you can have a grain structure which is like this. So, this is you can say a polycrystalline equiaxed grain structure and in this case you have so, this is a preferred grain structure because it prevents recombination 
sideways there are no leakages and recombination paths in the film so this is preferred over you can't make a single crystal films um, which is difficult to make uh, but you can certainly make a columnar polycrystalline structure which is better over aqueaxed structure of the films and the processing of cdt can also be done by spray deposition So, this spray deposition process uses uh, uh, basically a slurry of CDTE, CDCL2 and a, a carrier and this carrier is typically propylene glycol. Okay. So, basically you make a sort of mixture in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sort of solvent and then you spray it on a substrate and then you uh, heat, heat treat. So, basically you spray it followed by heat treatment at about uh, you know 200 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade and sometimes oxygen is also used in the later stages. And this uh, after this one deposits uh, serious layer on it. So, this is the processing these are the processing methods for uh, cadmium telluride and again uh, in this case uh, it can also be screen printed there is a possibility to screen print it also. Uh, so, one can also screen print so screen printing is basically you have a substrate you put a you put slurry on it and the slurry is taken away using a, a roller. So, this is a roller this roller is going to go forward. So, through a screen the film is deposited. So, you have a substrate with and then you have a screen on top of it. So, there could be a screen on top of it this is a screen with certain mesh size and then on top of the screen you put in the slurry and the slurry is rolled over using a roller manually or automatically to give you a film. So, this is also a process and then you of course, heat treat after deposition. Okay. So, these are certain processes which uh, one can undertake to to make these films and uh, cadmium sulphide is typically deposited by you can, you, you can deposit cadmium sulphide by solution deposition, chemical bath deposition. So, you can have CDS layer oops, CDS layer can be deposited by chemical chemical processes or it can also be used using uh, physical processes. And this thin film is very thin. Okay. So, the issues which are there in now in the process what are the things that one adopts to improve the process. So, the device structure that we get is something like this. So, we have glass substrate. So, this is glass transparent glass the light comes from this side and then we have a TCO. So, you can have a TCO here TCO means transparent conducting oxide and then we have a thin high resistance oxide HR oxide and then we have a layer of CDS. So, this is CDS. this is n type layer and then we have a layer of CDT this is p type CDT and then we have a secondary contact. So, you can make a contact on top here top contact. Okay. Now, generally there are certain issues in this device structure one it is important to have a particular grain structure. So, your grain structure may be 
it is preferred that you have a grain structure like this. Okay. So, we pref preferable, so columnar grain structure is preferred here okay, in the CDT layer. Similarly, within CDS layer also you would like to have, you would have grain boundaries, these grain boundaries if they are columnar it is better. So, again for this layer also we would all like to have a columnar grain structure. We should prevent, see this layer is very thin, it is about 100 nanometer or so and this is about couple of microns, okay, 2 to 3 microns or so. So, the interdiffusion must be avoided, interdiffusion or interreaction or reaction between the layers must be divided. And uh, so, uh, because this layer is very thin, it is, it is possible that you may consume some of this layer with the interreaction as a result uh, the CDS thickness effectively may get reduced and you may form some sort of layer at the interface. So, these are certain issues in CDT solar cells which one has to overcome by optimizing the process and studying the interdiffusion of various elements. Of course, there is cadmium on both sides, but sulfur can diffuse on this side, tellurium can reduce on the other side making an alloy of CDS and CDT uh, which should be avoided. So, what are the, so uh, there are a few things one does to improve the process. solar cells. The first thing one does is CdCl2 or cadmium chloride treatment. This is generally uh, done to this is and it is done in. So, basically done in oxygen and CdCl2 presence okay, cadmium chloride and this leads to lower defect density. So, chlorine doping of films is useful. So, basically you dope the chlorine in it. So, lower defect density via chlorine doping after CDCL2 treatment. It also promotes the P type character. Okay. So, when C L goes in it goes as C L minus plus uh, if it goes to interstitial site let us say and then it, it gives rise to a hole. Okay. So, it promotes the P type character and this also promotes the grain growth. And one also does low resistance contact. So, if you couple this CDCL2 treatment with low, low resistant contact formation this leads to better device properties. So, so for example, you can have uh, at the at the back contact or on the on the other side where you do not have glass uh, between the contact and uh, CDT if you put a layer of copper. So, copper layer helps in improving performance. So, copper basically improves the back contact uh, and improves the P type conductivity and uh, one can also do window layer improvements. So, so window layer means cadmium sulphide layer which is made by either chemical bath deposition. or PVD such as sputtering so basically it should be as thin as possible it's about 50 to 100 nanometer thin so 50 to 100 nanometer thin so that it doesn't lead to any losses and uh, it allows most of the light to reach to cadmium telluride as an absorber to absorb most of the light. So, it does not prevent any light, it does not block any light. So, it basically a window, it should not act as a blocker. Okay. 
So, the quality of CDS layer which is to be deposited using chemical bath deposition and PVD or PVD processes is quite important. And I said as I said that CDCL2 treatment is important because that promotes P type behavior, it also promotes the, uh, uh, the grain growth. So, this is essential for getting good properties along with some modification in the back contact. Sometimes also if you if you put a um, thin resistive oxide layer between TCO and CDS improves the, the junction. Basically, it uh, reduces the uh, forward current Okay, because you know your, your J, J total is minus J S C or J S C plus J V. So, it keeps the J V under check, keeps the J V little lower and generally we use. So, some of the high efficiency cells for example, some of the high efficiency cells use cadmium tin oxide as TCO instead of indium tin oxide and Zn2 SnO4 as high resistance oxide layer because they have they are nearly similar structures. So, the interface is very good and recombination losses are smaller. So, these are certain parameters that these are certain process improvements one can do in the CDTE solar cells. The CDCL2 treatment is done by how do you do CD, CDCL2 treatment? So, so, cadmium chloride treatment is done by it is done after the deposition of. So, it is a post deposition treatment okay. And it is done by few methods. So, you can have first method as uh, dipping CDT layer in CDCL2 CH3 OH bath, or it could be CDCL2 H2O bath, followed by drying and then uh, heating. Okay. So, followed by drying and then heat treatment. Okay. It can also be done, uh, so you can also expose CDT film to CDCL2 vapors. You can also do expose to HCl or chlorine gas because the main thing is to get introduce the chlorine in it and the temperature generally of this treatment is 380 to 450 degree centigrade and the treatment is done for 15 to 30 minutes and a oxygen treatment is useful. So, if you do a oxygen treatment at about 450 degree centigrade is useful. So, all these things they lead to reduction in the sheet resistance. So, these so what you obtain is reduction in sheet resistance by about 2 to 3 orders of magnitude. Remember it is not 2 to 3, three times it is 2 to 3 orders of magnitude. Okay. So, if it was 1000 earlier it will become 10. Okay. And uh, they also improve the shunt resistance. Uh, and as a result, JSC and VOC improve. Also, the fill factor. So, if you just qualitatively want to look at the effect of this treatment, so if you plot for example, let us say the plot of J versus V. So, if this is 0, this is 
so let's say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This is milliamps per centimeter square J S J. So this would be five ten. And the voltage, let's say, is uh, about zero point five and one volt here. So the one without any heat treatment would give you a properties uh, a property something like that. So this is without heat treatment. If you do a heat treatment in air at 550, so if you do in air at 550, you will marginally increase the VOC and you will get. So, this is for air 550 degree centigrade 5 minutes, but if you do CDCL2 treatment, the current increases and the VOC is nearly somewhere here and you get a very good IV curve. So, so this is for CDCL2 treatment 420 degree centigrade in air. So, it is CD 20 minutes. So, CDCL2 treatment in oxygen in air is a critical thing to improve the performance and this is what one observes in these solar cells and the grain size tends to increase substantially, the grain size becomes of the order of about a micron or more. So, after this treatment, the grain size increases to about 1 to 2 micron. So, objective is to obtain. So, this chlorine uh, treatment is uh, important for CD uh, cadmium to and the XRD also tends to show changes. So, after CDCL2 treatment, the, the 111, uh, so before uh, the, so before treatment, one 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 peak is strong. while others are weaker. After treatment, uh, the other peaks also become strong. So, 111, 220, 311. So, peaks become stronger. So, basically you can say that there is an improvement in the x-ray diffraction pattern or you can say crystallinity improvement, okay. improvement in the essentially crystallinity. So, this is what uh, is the uh, sort of CDCL2 processing about, there are issues as I said, the issues are um, since you have CDS and CDTE, there is an issue of intermixing at when you do the heat treatment, they, they tend to make an alloy CDTE X S 1 minus X. So, this has to be prevented uh, from formation. So, it, it leads to uh, basically the quant it leads to reduction. So, basically it consumes you can say CDS. As a result, uh, low wavelength QE reduces, okay, because CDS is high band gap material. So, as a result, it is mainly used for the lower wavelength side absorption, and as a result, uh, when it gets consumed, the amount of CDS is reduced, and hence it reduce, it's, it reduces the quantum efficiency on the lower wavelength side or higher uh, energy side. And uh, again, this is prevented by um, prevented by CDCL2 treatment to some extent. Okay.
there are certain other issues such as uh, toxic nature of toxicity of cadmium. However, there are both uh, supporters and detractors of the same thing. Some some people say cadmium is very nasty; it will get it will pose health concerns. But the other people say that you know there is not enough cadmium in it to prevent. And and since it's a solar cell is going to be recycled in a safe manner, there is no way cadmium will leach out so much. So there are both sides, but in the end disposal must be safe. So, safe practices in terms of recycling and disposal are needed and processing should be made more environment friendly. But by and large it is a very very good technique, it has good atmospheric stability, excellent stability, good performance. So, it is a technology of future. It already consists of 10 percent market of the solar PV devices in worldwide and there are hopes that this will pick up soon. So, this is where we end our discussion on cadmium telluride. Um, and uh, next we will move on to, uh, so cadmium to ride as I, as I already told you the efficiencies of, of the order of, uh, let me give you the efficiency numbers, the efficiency of cadmium to ride I think I told you in the last class. So, efficiency of cadmium to ride is about uh, um, 21 percent efficiency which is, which is a pretty good number and the costs are expected to come down in future. So, this is where we uh, stand today discussing CDT solar cells completely. Next we move on to our discussion to the next topic will be, uh, we will be discussion on uh, copper, indium, gallium, selenide solar cells which is called as CIGS, another important thin film technology which has lot of potential to make it to make it commercial thank you